All right, man. Good to see everybody again this morning. I'm just going to apologize in advance. I woke up with some kind of head cold this morning. So if I had to blow my nose or something in the middle, I apologize in advance because it's been like a it's been like a fountain this morning. So uh, more information y'all need to know, but I just wanted you to know that in advance. I apologize. Uh, man, so good to see all you guys, all the guys watching the playback. Just a quick announcement before I jump in to what guys put on my heart for this morning. Man, we're just a little over three months away just a little over three months away to Men of Valor Conference 2021, which will be in uh, North Carolina. And if you haven't signed up uh, yet, go get registered. We'd love to have you come and join us. Uh, you can find out all that information, see the lineup of speakers and find out more information at menofvalorconference.org, menofvalorconference.org. Uh, and uh, man, we'd love to have you guys come and join us. I see a lot of faces on here that I know is already registered and we can't wait to see you face to face uh, in August for about three days there that we get to hang out and get God's word together and just uh, grow together. So, all right, guys, let's pray. If you got your Bibles, be turning to Philippians chapter number two this morning. Philippians chapter number two. And while you're turning there, let me pray for us. Father, we love you. We're just so thankful for the opportunity, Lord, to gather digitally once again on a Monday morning. And God, just uh, so thankful for your faithfulness. God, that even in the moments when we're not faithful, even in the moments where we screw up, you've never messed up. You've never let us down. You're always faithful. You're always there. You're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And God, we're just so thankful uh, that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus still died for us. Seeing and knowing what he was getting. And he still said we were worth it. And Father, we praise you and thank you for just for who you are, but for being willing to send your son and for him being willing to do your will, to give us eternal life. And God, for that this morning, we praise you. We just pray over your word this morning as we're fixing to uh, read through a few verses. God, may it challenge us as men. May it encourage us as we start this work week. And may we all be encouraged and equipped to go be the men of God that you're calling us to be. Father, bless our time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, Philippians chapter number two. Uh, we're just going to take a few verses out. I'll be honest with you this morning after my quiet time, I was sitting there. I was like, all right, Lord, uh, really appreciate you giving me something before I get in front of the screen this morning because uh, those are kind of sometimes scary moments. And I was just kind of flipping through God's word this morning, just reading some just stuff and Man, when I, when, I, when I turned to Philippians chapter 2, this just kind of really stuck out to me, and I really feel that's just kind of what the Spirit laid on my heart this morning. So Philippians chapter 2, we're going to uh, start reading in verse number 12 and just read through a few verses and then uh, take a pause and just uh, walk through a few things that, I, that the Lord showed me as I was just walking through it this morning. All right, verse number 12, here we go. Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like the stars in the world. 16, by holding firm to the word of life, then I can boast in the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I'm poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial service of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. As I read through those verses this morning, just two words that really stood out, as a bunch of stood out, but two words that really, if I could title this, uh, I, I would say this, even more. Even more. As you see right at the beginning, uh, we know right anytime you see therefore in scripture, you need to go back and look and see what it's there for. We've heard that. If you go back and read up in the verses before in verses five through 11, uh, man, Paul's writing about Christ is uh, humility, his exaltation, how, man, he come down, he humbled himself and, and everything that Christ did just for us because he loved us. And then he said, man, because Christ was willing to do that, he said, therefore, my dear friends, just as you always obeyed, 
And, and I want to say this, man. Man, even though you've done what you've done for the kingdom, maybe you've been a, a believer, a, a Christ follower for 30, 40, 50 years, or it may just be a week. Man, what you've done, that, and Paul said, hey, that's awesome what you, you obeyed. He said, but I want to encourage you that, hey, even more now, now is the time. You know, we can't live on yesterday's uh, accomplishments. I've said it before. Hey, yesterday's gone. Praise God for what happened yesterday. Praise God we can look back uh, and, and take things and learn from it, you know, on what not to do, right? I got a lot of those on. <laughs> Don't do that again. Uh, but thank God we can look back sometimes and say, man, that was a great time. I remember those experiences. And, and I just want to remind you of this that a lot of times, you know, we think about sharing our testimonies. And if we ever share a testimony, I've always said this, your testimony should be constantly changing, not your salvation testimony. That, that should be locked in stone. But your testimony on what God is doing in your life, that should be changing weekly. You shouldn't just be talking about every time you share your testimony, talking about your salvation experience. And I thank God that we can share that. I share mine a lot. But I should be able to share with you, hey, yeah, God saved me on December the 8th, 2002. Man, he, he brought me from death to life. He made me a new creature. But, hey, it just didn't stop there. Because, you know, the old song, he's still working on me. Well, I'll tell you, boys, he's still working on me. And I should be able to tell you, hey, let me tell you what God did in my life last week. Let me show you. Let me tell you what I saw God do last week. Let me show you what, what God showed me in his word this morning. We should have a constant, fulfilling, fresh, new testimony to share with people. And, hey, I tell you what, if, if we're not getting that, then something's wrong. Because we should have a fresh excitement for the Lord every single day. Uh, I said it a couple of weeks ago, I was going through a Francis Chan study and he said this, you know, and I agree, our quiet time should be the most exciting time of our day. That should be the thing that we're talking about as we go throughout our day is our time with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, getting in the word, the creator of the universe made time and wanted time to spend with just me. He wanted time. Is there anybody, some of you, I don't know your fatherly experiences, but man, I know with my kids, I know with my dad, I, I was lucky to be an only child growing up all right so i didn't have to fight for for mom and dad's attention no, i probably got on their daggum nerves that's why man i wish you had somebody to go play with because it gets on our nerves but I, i've got five kids travis watson's got 23 and, and we know you know I, but this is what i see with my kids you know what they do they they they, they will fight for dad's attention I, I got two little girls i got i got a, a four-year fixing to be four-year-old and a fixing to be two-year-old and can i tell you they fight sometimes for dad's attention. They both want to get, there's many times I'm sitting at my kitchen table and I got one of them on both knees because they both fight for dad's attention. But what this is, listen, this is where I'm going with this. But what I see is when you, when you stop and you know this, if you're a dad or if you ain't a dad, man, maybe one day you'll get experiences. But when you take the time and just get down in the floor, you look that one child in the eye and you say, hey, I'm going to spend a little time just with you. What do you want to do? Man, they light up. Can I tell you, that's the way we should light up, knowing that the God of the universe takes time to skip down and say, hey, I'm here. I just want to talk with just you today. Man, that, that should excite us. As men of God, that should encourage us. And listen, that we should be going out every day and talking about our time with God. But man, we, we've made it such a check off the list instead of truly finding and making time. Listen, we'll make time. I said this in our church service yesterday, you know. Hey, when the ball game goes into overtime, we'll go to work next day and talk about, man, wasn't that football game? It went into three overtimes. We stayed up to two o'clock in the morning watching a stupid football game. And I've watched a stupid football game, all right? I like football. Ball. But we'll go to work talking about how good it was, even though it took away sleep. But where's the last time that we said, hey, I lost some sleep because I got in God's presence, because I got in God's word. And we wake up more excited about our time with God yesterday than we did about the ball game, about the, the baseball game going into 17 innings and going for six hours. And we sit there and watch the whole blame thing. But we can't get excited about getting in God's word for 15 minutes. Something's wrong. This should be the most exciting thing. And just like Paul said, hey, but this is what he said. He said, hey, I don't want you to just obey when you're in my presence, right? It's really, it's real easy for us to be good boys, right? When we're, when we're at our church gathering, when we're in our small group, when we're with our family trying to show them what a godly man looks like. But man, he said this, but listen, even more in my absence. Listen, I believe this morning that if Paul could speak to each of us on this call, if he could get on the Zoom call and log in, 
Amen. He, he would say this to us this morning. Hey, when we get off this call, I need you to be even more following Christ when you go out in that world. Because listen, that's where the lost are. That's where eternity is at stake for men and women, boys and girls, that you will walk across their pathway today. And God's going to align your life with their life and make some divine appointments for you. And he says, I need you to be even more what God has called you to be out there than you are right here. It's easy to lift your hands when you're around other believers. It's easy to share your testimony when you're around other believers. It's easy to unmute on a Zoom call with a bunch of other men that's woke up early in the morning to get in God's word. But listen, Paul said this, even more so, I need you to be that. I need you to be what I'm seeing right here. I need you to be that out there. But the sad thing is, there's a lot of us that's not even willing to be that right here. There's a lot of us, we're not even willing to lift our hands and worship. There's a lot of us, we're not even willing to just let loose on Sunday mornings or when our gathering is with other believers and, and sing. And I promise you this, if you're not willing to do it on a Zoom call, if you're not willing to do it in your, your uh, place of worship with other believers, I promise you this, you won't do it out there in the world. If you're ashamed to worship with other believers, you're ashamed to testify in front of other believers, I promise you, you won't do it at the gym. You won't do it at your work. You won't do it there. But man, even more. Because you know why even more? Because that old boy that work that you're going to cross about, those guys at the gym today that you're going to come across, uh, man, some of your family members that you'll get to meet with over the next few weeks, whenever that is, with family get-togethers, with Fourth of July and other things coming up, they're lost and dying and going to hell. And you might be the only bit of Jesus and he's put you in their path, he's put you in their life, for you to go and be even more, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it may not be. I, I said this yesterday. I said, you know, for, for some people to say, man, it's not fun to share the God. I'm telling you this. Listen, if you get close enough to Jesus, it's fun to go share with Jesus. Listen, one of the greatest joys is to get to lead somebody to Jesus, is to get to kneel beside somebody or, or stand and talk to somebody and pray and watch them experience Jesus for the very first time. Time. But I want to tell you, man, listen, if we would get excited about Jesus, if we would truly dig in and say, I'm going to be even more of a Christ follower out there than I am in my small group, out there than I am in my church, out there, listen, out there, because listen, we gather so we encourage and equip. One of the things we do, man, up Monday for is to encourage you, is hopefully to equip you to, to man, hopefully fire you up, not to run through a wall, but to run across the street and tell your neighbor about Jesus. I don't want you to run through a wall. That'd be stupid. You'd get hurt. I want you to be willing to run across the cubicle to that lady that's over there fixing to die and go to hell, that her husband is a drunk, and you know, somebody needs to go win him to Jesus. Let's get fired up and go after what God has called us to do. Matthew 28, 19, he said, go. And that word go in the original language meant as you go. It meant every part of your life, when you're at work, when you're, when you're with your family, as you're walking throughout the day, you should be going and making disciples, sharing the gospel, teaching what Jesus has taught you, taking the word of God and putting the, the rubber on the road and making sure that even more out there, listen, because they need it. They need it. We are the church. It ain't your building that you meet at. That building 100 years from now will probably be gone. But the gospel will still stand. The word of God will still be there. But it's up to us. He has entrusted me and you. Scripture tells us we are ambassadors for Christ. If we are truly born again and we've given our life to Jesus, this world is not our home. And it's time we stop acting like it. It's time we start looking different. You say, well, they're going to look at me funny. Hey, that's all right. Because I promise you at the judgment seat, I, I don't know how the judgment seat will work. I don't know how all that's going to go down, boys. But I've always thought, what if, what if we were there and we got to watch? We got to watch Jesus judging the lost. And what would happen if we were sitting there watching and there was that old boy from work or one of your family members, they stand in that line, they was going up for Jesus. And they hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And this is just what I've always pictured. I would hate to be standing there with them for you to be able to see me. They look at me and say, why didn't you tell me? 
why didn't you tell me? To me, that'd be a whole lot harder conversation than sharing Jesus with somebody at work. They might get pissed at you. They might not like it. They may tell you to shut up, but that's okay. Your job ain't your job ain't to save them. Your job, sir, my job, sir, is to share the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict them. It's the Holy Job Spirit to convert them. It's just our job to share the good news with them. It's just our job to make sure that they have heard the gospel. I'm trying to pull something out. I'm going to share a quote from you. It was on the back of one of our soul concerts. I read it yesterday. It was a quote from Charles Spurgeon. I'm going to share it with you men this morning. Hold on just a second. I wasn't planning on it, but here we go. This is what Charles Spurgeon said. If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped about their knees, imploring them to stay. If hell must be filled, let it be filled with the teeth of our exertions and let not one go unwarned or unprayed for. We should have the mentality of whatever it takes for me to share the gospel with them, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Whatever it costs me, I'm willing because eternity is too long and I love them too much to know that they're going to split hell wide open. Sir, Robbie Galley said this, when salvation come to you, it was on its way to somebody else. When God's grace come to you, it was on its way to somebody else. But the question is, will it stop with you or will you allow it to flow through you so that you can be light to someone else? But let's keep working. That's point one. I only got 12 points. Man, you ready? All right, here we go. All right, so that's point one. Even more. Paul said, even more of my absence. He said this. Listen, this is where it is. He said, work out your own salvation. He didn't say work for your salvation. He said, hey, I put the salvation. I'm the one that saved you. It's by grace through faith. I'm the one that put the salvation in you. He said, but listen to me. He said, but it's up to you to work it out. It's up to you to live it out. And then you see right here the human responsibility in verse 13. It said, for it is God who is working in you both to what? To will and to work. You got to have the will and you got to go out and work it out, man. It's up to us. It's one thing, man, Hank Sharp, I'm in a polo with him and he was saying this the other day. He was sharing something that God had showed him. How a lot of times, you know, we like to talky-talky, but it's a different thing to go out and do the walk. We like to talk about we need to do this. We like to talk about we need to soul win. We like to talk about getting on a uh, uh, man up Monday and us talking about going sharing our faith and winning men and women to Jesus. And we'll all say amen. We'll say yes, we need to do that. But it's another thing to hit the end, the Zoom call, and then go out and do it. Because we sit here and talk about it all day long. We sit in our churches and amen the preacher and go to the altar and have an emotional experience and say, I'm going to win somebody to Jesus or I'm going to share my testimony. I'm going to be bold with my faith. But it's a whole different story to actually go out the walls above our door of our church right here. It says you are now entering the mission field. When you walk out of the door of your church, when you walk out the door of your, of your home every morning, sir, can I remind you that you are a missionary. You are being sent out to that circle of influence wherever it might be for you to go and share the gospel for you to go and live it out for you to work out your salvation for you to will and to work according to what he has good purpose according to god's plan for your life and this is what it says verse 14 and i'm just going to tie this right in because it's right there in the scripture he says and do everything without grumbling or arguing how many of you done grumbled already this morning? Somebody be honest with me. Your coffee wasn't ready in time. You spilled a little bit of your coffee. Your alarm clock didn't go off on time. Or you grumbling because you I got to get up old man up Monday. I overslept. And you grumbled about that. Listen, we a bunch of grumbling little sissies sometimes. I'm just being honest with you. Maybe that's just me and y'all can make fun of me for being one. But I'll tell you, I'm, I'm one of the biggest whiners sometimes that I've ever seen in my life. A lot of times I whine more just under, under my breath because I don't want nobody to hear it. But listen, it's time that we truly get up and listen, we'll grumble to ourselves about sharing the gospel. And you know what we're doing? We're arguing with God. I promise you this. Listen, today as you go out, I want you to hear me right here. Everybody listening, well, nod your head if you're listening. Can you hear me? I want to make sure my microphone is working before I say this. All right, listen to me. Hear me. Y'all ready? Say yeah. Okay. I couldn't hear you, but I can see your lips. Listen, today, today, if something inside of you says, Share the gospel with that person. Give that person a gospel track. If you hear that in, 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 your, in, in yourself, if something in your head tells you to give a gospel track, to share the gospel, 
I want to promise you one thing. I want to help somebody right here. That's not the devil telling you to do that. I want to promise you this. That's not your flesh telling you to do that. Your flesh, that is uncomfortable. Satan don't want you to share the gospel with somebody. Can I tell you? I'm just going to be flat honest with you. We all talk about we want to know the will of God. We want to know what God wants us to do in our life. Can I tell you if something in you tells you to share a gospel track, if something in you tells you to share the gospel with that person, can I tell you who it is? That's the Holy Spirit of God. It is nothing else but the Holy Spirit of God trying to tell you to be obedient, trying to give you a blessing, trying to give you an opportunity to work out your own salvation. And listen, there's so many times where for some reason we'll hear that inside of us and we'll think, well, we'll start doing this, right? We'll, we'll start having that moment. We'll want to lay out the fleece. We'll start having a giddy moment. Well, God, is this really you? If it is, let a purple semi-truck with 12 yellow cars on the back of it pass by, Lord, and I'll do it. We'll start throwing out fleeces when, when God's telling us to share the gospel, when he's sitting there telling us plain and boldly to go do it. Because I promise you, there's nothing inside of you. Paul said, there's nothing in me in the flesh that is good. The only thing that is good is me and Jesus Christ. And I promise you this, sir, listen to me. I want to help you. Be obedient. Because listen, if you say no, you know what that is? That is sin in your life. Because you just told God no in what he's told you to do. So for somebody, I, I just helped you today. So when you hear that, share a gospel track. Share the gospel. Share your testimony with that person. That's the Holy Spirit of God, sir, telling you to do that. Nothing else. So sorry that I just took your excuses away for you going and sharing the gospel. I, I don't apologize. Because it's time as us as men of God. Listen, the only way we're ever going to lead our families closer to Jesus, the ever way we're ever truly going to start making disciples is the first step is me and you being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And the more that me and you are obedient to the Holy Spirit, listen, this is what happens to you. This is the good part. We get closer to Jesus. And the closer we get to Jesus, the more we know him, listen to me, the more we love him. The more you get to know him, the more you truly get in his presence, the more you want it. Listen, and I want to tell you, after time, after time, and trust me, I fail as much as anybody. I, I, I have my faults. I have my failures. But listen, in those moments where I truly get in his presence, listen, it wants me. I long for more. I long to know him more. I want to try to be obedient to him. I want to get my time where, listen, I want my, 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 my prayer since, since I've been going through some of these studies is, God, let this be the most exciting time of my day. Listen, I know he's going to show up. I know he's willing to speak to me, but I, am I going to be in a place where I've repented of my sins, where, where I'm coming as a clean vessel to receive something from God in my quiet time? I don't want to just check it off the box anymore. There were so many years that I just checked my quiet time off the box because it was the right thing to do. Listen, men, it's time that we come clean. We want to get in the presence of God. We are willing to say even more out there. I'm going to be more of a Christian out there than I am in here. Listen to me. I'd much rather the, the, law, the, the homeless people in my community tell people about my faith than the people in my church. I'd much rather the people that I work with say, man, just, just to watch him. He's constantly talking about scripture. He's talk, I'd rather them be talking about me than my preach, them, them the people in my church, me as a pastor, than them saying, boy, he sure does, he sure does do this. Or I'd rather the people out in my community. Did you know what that tells me? When the people at work's talking about it, that tells me that I'm doing it even more out there. I should do it in here. I should do it in here. I should do it in my family but even more so out there because they need it. So let's finish up. I got, I got, I got to go fast. Y'all ready? All right, here we go. So he said this, do everything without grumbling and arguing. Why? Verse 15, so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine like stars in the world. If I've said it one time, I've said it 50 times on this call. Man, it's time we go light it up for the king. He said right here, listen, listen to what he said. Let me read that again. He said, you do all this so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation. 
He said, so a month. Do you hear that? Do you see that? He said, a month. So he's saying that when you're in where they're at, when you're at work, when you're at the grocery store, when you're among that darkness, when you're among the unbelievers, you need to work out your own salvation. You need to be obedient there. Why? He said, so you can be like a shining star in the darkness so that you can be a difference maker for the kingdom. So that you can say, even more there, I'm going to shine. Hey, because you know what? When you go to your gathering and you're in there lifting your hands, you're saying in praises, you're, you're around a bunch of other, a lot of times, a, a bunch of other believers. And it's a bunch of stars. It's like a big cluster of stars. If you ever see a big cluster of stars on, on a cloudless night, right? You just don't pick out one star, can you? You just see the big cluster. And praise God for that, that we get to do that and worship other believers. But on those nights where you just see one star here, you know what? Man, there'll be that one star that just stands out up in that dark sky. And can I tell you what scripture tells us? And right here is what, what, what Paul was telling us. That needs to be me and you. You may be the only light at your workplace, the only light at that place where you go today. But it's up to me and you to be obedient. When God tells us to share, like I said, remember this. That's the Holy Spirit telling you to do it. So don't start believing that lies. Don't, don't start questioning it. How many times have we done this? We were here, share the gospel with that. Share, give him a gospel track. And we start doing this. I can say it because I've done it. Lord, you sure? Yeah, he's sure. Yeah, yeah, listen. God ain't thinking, maybe, hey, hey, maybe we should share the gospel with him. God's never said that. God, God isn't maybe guessing like maybe let's share the gospel with them. He's thought, he's not like, he, he, he don't go like this. He, he don't go, Jordan. Are you comfortable with sharing the gospel with that man that just walked through that door? He's never done that. No. Listen, that's part of Luke 9, 23, right? That's part of taking up your cross and following him. So, man, I challenge you today. Today. And then I want you to go back and listen to this call tomorrow, and I'll challenge you tomorrow. It'll be Man Up Tuesday. Go light it up for the king. I encourage you, if he tells you to share today, there's no question on who's telling it to you. So this this one, you're going to have the opportunity today. Man, I've said this to my church. They're sick of hearing me say it. There's two things that you can't say in the same sentence as Jesus is Lord. If Jesus is truly Lord in your life, there's two things that you cannot say in the same sentence, and that is this. No, Lord. Because if you say no, then he's truly not Lord in that moment. But if he's truly Lord, then the only correct answer that we can give him is just Lord, and then go do what he tells us to do. So men, go light it up. Let's go share the gospel. Hey, you may never get to personally win somebody to Jesus out there, but that's not your job. Your job is just to share the good news with them and leave the results up to Jesus. Hey, you might get to lead them right to Christ. You might get to walk them through some scripture. Or it might be you plant the seed and next Sunday they take their family to a church somewhere and they hear the gospel again and they get saved in that church service. And one day in heaven, you might have somebody that you don't even remember come running up to you and say, you don't know me, but that one time in that gas station, you gave me a gospel track. And in that moment, I just kind of stuck it in my pocket. But can I tell you, it may be I went home later and read that track. And the Holy Spirit convicted me and I gave my life to Jesus. You may never get to see the fruit here, but I promise you this. God's word says this. It will not return void. Be obedient, men. Go out and light it up for King Jesus today. He is worthy. He's not only worthy of our worship on Sundays when we gather. He's worthy of your worship today as you're scattered as the church, as we go out and light it up. So, man, I love you. Man, I ate up all the time today. So I apologize for that, but I pray that you are encouraged. Hey, uh, once again, I'm going to go through the chat here in a minute. If you got any prayer requests, feel free to drop those in here if you're live on the call. Um, and and we'll, we'll go through and just pray over those after the call ends. But, man, I love you. Thankful for all you guys showing up each and every Monday. And, uh, man, I can't wait to see a bunch of you in North Carolina in August for some face-to-face. -face. Uh, like I said, if you haven't signed up or you got more questions about that, go check it out, mentalvalorconference.org. We'd love for you. Uh, you can send us an email if you got any questions about anything. But we'd love to see you up in Ridgecrest at the end of August. So let me pray over you, man, and then go light it up for the king. Father, we love you. Lord, we're just so thankful for this time, so thankful for your word. And I pray that today us as men of God 
that, Lord, that when we hear you tell us to do something, that we do it. That we rise up, that we be bold, that we would remember what the Bible said over in Acts. I believe it's chapter 4, verse 12 and 13 where it said when they realized that John and Peter were uneducated and untrained men, but they seen their boldness. It said that they realized that they had been with Jesus. May because of our boldness today, people realize that we have spent time with Jesus today. Father, may you be honored by our lives today. May we go out and work out the salvation that you've put in us. And may we share the gospel and light it up for the King. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great week. And we'll see everybody next Monday.